These are the top stories. Anti-pipeline protesters in BC say they will comply with accord injunction members of the Wet'suwet'en First Nation who have been blocking access to the site of a proposed natural gas pipeline say they will give access to construction workers by this afternoon. The concession followed talks with the RCMP days after 14 people were arrested, in turn prompting protests across the country. For subscribers Earlier yesterday, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau said the arrests were unfortunate, but that the rule of law must be respected. BC Premier Don Horgan, meanwhile, said the project has sufficient consent from First Nations and will proceed. The elected chiefs of the Wet'suwet'en endorsed the pipeline, but the protesters say the hereditary House chiefs have jurisdiction over a larger area and did not provide consent. This is the Daily Morning Update newsletter. If you're reading this on the web, or it was forwarded to you from someone else, you can sign up for Morning Update and more than 20 more Globe newsletters on our newsletter sign-up page. Ottawa is opening the door to new requests from Canadians who say they are thalidomide victims. The expansion of the Landmark program could offer compensation to dozens who say they were born with severe birth defects because of the notorious drug but lack sufficient documentary proof. For Terry Bolton, the news has been a long time coming. We've been fighting this for years. A lot of people are facing financial hardship and are close to living on the street. In 2015, the federal government granted annual pensions to about 100 people affected by the drug. Ever since, others stepped forward to say they were victims but their claims were rejected by a third-party program administrator. Congo's presidential election results are being denounced as rigged. The prospect of Congo's first peaceful democratic transfer of power is in jeopardy. The Election Commission declared opposition leader Felix Shisekedi the winner, but fellow opposition challenger Martin Fayulu said the results do not reflect the truth of the ballots. All eyes are now on Congo's powerful Catholic Church, which said its 40,000 election observers at polling stations found a clear winner but was barred from saying more. Fayula called on the Catholic Church to release their tallies and accused the government of brokering the deal with Shisekedi as hopes faded for the ruling party candidate. China's ambassador to Canada is accusing Ottawa of white supremacy over its treatment of Ming Wanzhou in a column in the Ottawa-based Hill Times publication. Luce slammed the federal government for demanding the release of detained Canadians Michael Spaver and Michael Kovrig. It's understandable that these Canadians are concerned about their own citizens. But have they shown any concern or sympathy for Ming after she was illegally detained and deprived of freedom? Lou wrote. The Huawei executive was arrested in Vancouver at the request of the U.S. on allegations of fraud related to the violation of sanctions against Iran. She has since been released on bail but can't leave the Vancouver area. Meanwhile, Spaver and Kovrig are imprisoned with restricted access in what's believed to be retaliation for the Ming case. Canada has called for their immediate release. Got a news tip that you'd like us to look into? Email us at tips at globianmail.com Need to share documents securely? Reach out via Secure Drop in case you missed IT. The Bank of Canada has put planned higher interest rates on hold. The central bank held its key rate at 1.75% as the economy slows as a result of lower oil prices, weaker housing activity and the U.S.-China trade clash. For subscribers, for homeowners and consumers, this means a reprieve from higher rates on mortgages and car loans for at least a few months. The downside is likely less business activity and poorer job prospects in 2019. Here's David Parkinson's take. The Bank of Canada has long predicted that the Canadian economy would rotate away from the consumer sector as its growth leader. It looks like in 2019, it won't have much choice. The consumer is about to step aside, whether the new leadership is ready or not. For subscribers, morning markets stocks slide. The early year rally in world stocks ran out of steam in Europe on Thursday and the dollar dropped to a near three-month low, as mixed signals from U.S.-China trade talks and caution at the Federal Reserve applied the brakes. Tokyo's Nikkei lost 1.3%, and the Shanghai Composite 0.4% though Hong Kong's Hang Seng gained 0.2%. In Europe, London's FTSE 100, Germany's DAX and the Paris CAC 40 were down by between 0.2 and 0.8% by about 7.10 a.m. ET.
New York futures were down. The Canadian dollar was above 75.5 U.S. cents. Oil prices were down on the Sino-U.S. trade talks and a surge in U.S. supply. What everyone's talking about? The new Canada Food Guide means the jig is up for meat and milk lobbies we won't know until the new Canada Food Guide has been officially released whether Health Canada will have been able to maintain its independence from both the lobbyists and the politicians, including the dozens of MPs with beef and dairy farmers in their writings who are upset. But let's hope the agency is able to stand its ground and help put Canadians on track to a healthier and more sustainable diet. Conrad Yakubuski, for subscribers, in the Trump era, the blessings of a divided U.S. government The U.S. system of government, even its current dysfunctional state, has its virtues. And the Canadian system, for all its strengths, has weak points available to be exploited by a Canadian version of the White House's current occupant. Globe editorial R. Kelly never hid who he was. Why did so few people believe him? For almost his entire career, musician R. Kelly has been dogged by allegations of sexual misconduct and violence, many of them involving minors. And for almost his entire career, he's avoided repercussions while accumulating Grammys and Soul Train Music Awards on his way to becoming an R&B icon. This week, though, that all began to end. The force behind this turning tide is surviving R. Kelly. A six-part documentary that quickly became one of the Lifetime Network's most-watched debuts when it ran last weekend, and it's shameful that it had to be made. The series brings to mind an enduring phrase by the late poet and icon Maya Angelou, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Dash Denise Balkasun living better five things to keep in mind when flying in winter. If you're traveling with skis or snowboard, make sure to check your airline's allowances before you arrive at the airport. And remember, all forms of outerwear must be placed in a bin when going through security. Footwear is fine to leave on if you're flying domestic in Canada. Subscribers can read more tips here. Moment in time David Bowie dies January 10, 2016 David Bowie fans barely had time to digest his latest album before they were hit with yet another surprise. Only this Bowie bombshell would be the last in a career filled with them. Just two days after the release of Black Star on his 69th birthday, the British icon was dead. He'd been diagnosed with liver cancer 18 months earlier, but fans and most friends knew nothing about it. While some experts opined that his 25th studio album was Bowie's way of saying goodbye, with the music video to the song Lazarus, for example, featuring the singer in a hospital bed singing the line Look up here, I'm in heaven, others disagree. What isn't up for debate is that the last few years of his life coincided with some of his busiest years professionally. He'd largely remained out of the public eye since 2006, when he gave his last stage performance, but in 2013 he surprised the music industry with the release of his album The Next Day and then began work on a musical called Lazarus, based around the 1963 book The Man Who Fell to Earth, which opened on Broadway just the month before his death. Paul Field. If you'd like to receive this newsletter by email every weekday morning, go here to sign up. If you have any feedback, send us a note.